Hello, I'm Braden Walters from the Young Agents Chapter at the Real Estate Institute of New South Wales, and I'm here with Eddie Sydney Pinkton, and we're talking about how to effectively communicate with your clients in real estate. Eddie, tell us a few different methods that uh, you would use uh, on a day-to-day -day basis in real estate. Okay, thanks, Braden. Um, I think some of the most important parts is really finding out your client and who you're working with at the time. I deal with a lot of different clients and uh, a lot of different age groups, Braden, and I find just before we have our first open home, I have a set to sell meeting with each and every client. And in that meeting, I talk to them about communication and firstly, how often they want to be communicated with, because that, that's a big difference between all different clients and also in what methods they like. Uh, one of my clients at the moment, so he just wants to know on email. He doesn't really want any phone calls. He's an executive and doesn't have the time to take a lot of phone calls. So he just wants a lot of communication on email. And also, uh, I know another one I recently sold for, a client of mine was in Miami and we did a lot of it on Facebook. So she'd jump online and we could chat on there about where the buyers are at and the negotiation. I found that works really well. But at the same time, we don't want to let those kinds of methods take over the phone. I think one of the most important things to remember is, is not to get away from the phone and face-to-face -face meetings. It's really easy now just to send a text message or an email. But some of the most important meetings and, and that you get the most out of is being in front of that client or even making the phone call. You've got to keep doing that. Look, I think that's a really valid point. I think we forget that it, it's easier to send a text message or a quick email mm -hmm. to a client, but I think it's very valid, it's a very good point to actually pick up that phone. How, what advice would you have to the young agents to get them, I guess, make it easier for them to pick up that phone and communicate over the phone? I think um, a lot of the clients I deal with and when I look at my testimonials, they talk about the communication that we had. And I believe that you can't have too much communication. So what you want to try and do is just find a reason to call. And there's so many reasons. I know sometimes I just log on to realestate.com.au and have a look how many hits we've had. And just call my clients say, you know, G'day XYZ, it's Eddie Piddington. Just want to let you know I've now had 1,700 views on realestate.com.au. Numbers are really ramping up, which is good. Look, it is, it's really important just to communicate with them each and every day, I believe. Uh, and that way, if you do have any harder conversations coming up, at least you've been speaking to them each day rather than calling and saying, okay, bang, and giving them the bad news. So Eddie, what I know I do is that every day I have a calendar appointment at five o'clock to call all my vendors yeah. um, and obviously give them any type of news, whether it's good or bad. What sort of, uh, what sort of communication do you do? How, how do you make sure that you're on top of that? Yeah, that's an awesome point, Brad. It really is. I think um, you've got to look at your phone calls and your communication. Like an appointment in your diary, but like an open home. So it's in your diary and it's non-negotiable. You can't say, oh, I've got to go out and do X, Y, or Z. It's in the diary. I've got to call my clients. I know every Monday I've got a segment in there that's for my vendor reports. So on a Monday by about 11 o'clock, they've all heard from me. And that, that's, you know, that's non-negotiable. They have to hear from me by that stage. And so what about communication via like letters and correspondence and things like that? Do you, you call your clients every day? Do you also do written reports and things? Yeah, I do. And I find a lot of my written reports are now via email. Uh, no matter what the age of the client, I find you can send so many through. And a recent campaign, before I came here, I was just having a look. I actually sent 38 emails within that campaign. So they're getting a lot of correspondence. And I find it good in email because rather than a phone call saying, XYZ is now up to you know a certain price and another buyer is now looking at paying X and this buyer is looking at paying that and this buyer is up to that and the owners are all of a sudden getting so, you know, they can't keep up. I'd rather put in an email of each of the interested buyer's names and the ones, some of the, the contract holders of the highest parties are highlighted in red. So they can get the email and then when I'm talking to them on the phone and say I've just got buyer X up to a certain price, they can look back and go, oh, that's the one with the family and they've been four times now and they can look back because mm. email is an easy way to keep looking back where I find snail mail now a bit too slow. So by the time you've sent it out, it's old news. Mm. I think it's a good reference point to, to follow off as well for owners. Not only are they getting that phone call and that up-to-date information, mm. they've also got something to fall back on and to see what difference is, well, what's been happening from week to week. Yeah. I think that's a very important thing as well. Yeah. In one of my recent campaigns, I was actually having a look and um, my outbox I had 38 emails to the one client. So you know, you look at it and you think it's a lot, but at least they, they know exactly what's happening through each stage of the campaign and they want that communication on stop. Probably about 20% of my listings now are coming from expired that have been on the market before with another agent. And first thing I do in those appointments when I'm meeting with a client, I kind of ask them, okay, well, what do you think went wrong? You know, just to get an idea of what had happened. And they always say there was enough communication. Once the agent signed the paper, we never heard from him. or We just didn't know where any of the buyers were up to. So I think that's a great example that, you know, 90% of the time if they haven't sold, the main problem is the communication, the lack of. I think it's so simple. There's, I guess there's no answer, but it seems to be so easy. Uh, to do. Whereas if you want to be that agent who doesn't call their owners and doesn't effectively communicate, yeah. that's all okay as well. But 
in order for you to do your job properly, I find it's easier for me if I communicate as much as possible. What sort of tips would you have for someone who's just starting out in how to make sure they're doing it right? Good question. What I think firstly is to actually meet with your client and have a chat to them because I always say to my clients, guys, each and every person is different and then my job as your agent is to tailor my service to you. So firstly, how often do you want to be communicated to? Ask them that because some people will say, well, Eddie, I don't want to hear from you until you get me an offer which is completely different and other people say, well, I wanna know every stage, I wanna hear from you daily if that's possible. And then the second question is, okay, well, what ways works for you the best to be communicated with? Some of maybe the older generation will say, look, just call me on the home phone, I can listen. And some of the other people, the executives that are busy all day will say, well, just email me, but can you just send me an email each day so I know what's happening? And just really find it because as an agent, our job each and every day is really tailoring our service to them and make it work for each and every client. So I suppose the main thing to take away from this today, Braden, is that communication is key. In this business, whether it's dealing with buyers, sellers, or potential vendors, you really need to be building a rapport. And the only way of doing that is through straight communication. So you've got to be doing that as much as possible with each and every person. And they'll tell you, if someone doesn't like it, they'll say, look, can you stop calling me so often? So that's fine. You know, maybe I'll give you another call in six months. But it's very rare that they'll actually say that. That's one of the best parts about being a member of the REI New South Wales Young Agents Group. Because every time we catch up with one another, there's so many different communication strategies and just ideas that people are sharing with each other. Um, my advice is to get involved with it and come along to our next event. For more information, check out REINSW.com.au.